Good morning, my friends. This is Paul, and today we're going to do a showcase of some amazing gifts that two of my supporters, Megan and Matthew, gave me. Now, I already filmed this earlier, but I made a little bit of a mistake when it came to the aspect ratio, so it won't quite be an unboxing as it was in the original take, but hopefully you guys will see this as a showcase instead and as evidenced by the subtitle of the video, hopefully my more Catholic-driven or moral-driven audience will be able to learn something from this. So before we get started, uh, this is the first time I'm filming in front of the camera with my new microphone. I've used it a couple of times for some of my more recent reviews. I know it comes with this little thing here, so I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to use it without that or not. So if you could give me feedback in the comments in addition to saying everything else, I don't want a bunch of comments saying, your microphone stinks, and nothing else. So if you could just give your, make yourself a little note to talk about the microphone and what you thought of the video, that would be much appreciated. So first off, uh, the context of these gifts is that both of my supporters wanted to make me happy. I did not ask either of them for these gifts. I didn't say anything like, oh, hey, it's my birthday. My birthday is not until next month, but still, they just approached me and said, would you like this kind of gift? So in the case of the first one, this is brought to us by Megan. She's one of the regulars at the gym that I work at, and we've gotten along really well ever since she saw that I was wearing my Deathly Hallows t-shirt and she asked me what house I was in. And from there, that's just so, sort of like how we became connected is we just love talking about Harry Potter, especially Hogwarts Legacy. And just one day, it was uh, shortly before or after St. Valentine's Day of all things. Now, let me clarify, she was not trying to hit on me. She is happily married. So this is an example where the Greek word for platonic love applied. She's just the type of person that her love language is giving gifts. And it's not meant to be flirtatious. It's just meant to be like, hey, Paul, I consider you like a friend of sorts. And I'm not cheating on my husband, but I still think you're pretty darn cool. So she gave me this. And for those of you that aren't in the know of Harry Potter, this is the Hufflepuff cup. And the reason why it's in 3D is actually because she has a 3D printer. So she took a 2D image made by one of her friends and was able to convert it into 3D. I didn't even know 3D printers existed until she told me about it. So I guess I'm either behind the times or I was ahead of the times when I talked about 3D printers in one of my novels, which I wrote back in, I'd like to say 2011 or 2012. I had the idea of like a, a drink machine where you could like reach in and then the drink would like come closer to you and then it would manifest in 3D. So maybe I got to predict the future. And then the second thing, um, I already knew what it was even before I opened it because one of my supporters, Matthew Rakowski, as you know, I keep thanking him in every or almost every video I make. He's my top tier patron. He sent me a message saying, hey, Paul, would you like this thing that I'm about to show you guys? And I said, oh, I would love it. Thank you very much. And so he gave me, cue the music, an amiibo of Joker. Now, one thing I want to point out, let's get to the boring stuff before we get into my thoughts on the Amiibo itself. They changed the back of the box for the Amiibos. Back before the 3DS and Wii U eShops shut down, they had quite the elaborate back display where they had images of what the fighter looked like in Smash, and then it would say like, hey, this is compatible with these systems. But now it just says, use Amiibo accessories in many compatible games, and then in fine print down here it says, Look for this icon on Amiibo compatible games, so it's a pretty boring box. But you're not here to talk about the back. You're here to talk about what's in the box. Now, for those of you that don't know much about Persona, Joker is one of the Phantom Thieves, so he wears that mask in the Metaverse, which the Metaverse is sort of like the cognitive representation of a person's desires. And his knife is like his main weapon of choice, and the blue flames underneath him are the Flames of Rebellion, because he's so determined to take down corrupt adults with corrupt desires that the blue flames manifest as a result of him saying, I want to change. And so that gives him the ability to summon a persona. And personas are basically like outward manifestations of the desires of a person's heart. 
it's a bit confusing, but if you actually play the games, it becomes second nature to you. So this is probably the amiibo that I'm most happy to own, besides the Banjo and Kazooie one, because I love Persona 5 so much. I actually have a history with Persona 5 that dates back even before it came on the Switch. I had seen a few YouTube videos talking about Persona 5, and I thought it seemed pretty cool. I liked the idea of time management, the fact that it was an RPG that was so stylish. But I thought, when is it ever going to come to a Nintendo system? And then I was first formally introduced to Joker when he was announced for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And even though I had next to no knowledge of Persona 5 extensively, I still remember really liking the Joker DLC because I liked Joker's stylish moveset. I liked all the spirit battles, the music was nice and jazzy, I liked the remix of Beneath the Mask. That was so cool because Beneath the Mask is such a, such a very uh, calming and tranquil song and the fact that they made it into an upbeat smash rendition is just utter genius. And then also I had a pattern of ever since after Joker made it into Smash, every year after that something Persona related was on my best games of the year list. In 2020, I had Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE at number 9 that had a Joker costume that you could unlock, and it was also Persona slash Fire Emblem crossover, hence where the Tokyo Mirage Sessions, it's SMT, the initials for Shin Megami Tensei, backwards. Then in 2021, Persona 5 Strikers made it onto number 8. 2022, Persona 5 Royal, was number five. I swear the five was just a coincidence. And then in 2023, yet again at the number five, yet again a total coincidence, Persona 5 Tactica. So I love Persona 5. I love the Phantom Thieves. Um, not too big of a fan of the earlier Persona games, but if Persona 3 Reload comes onto the Switch or Nintendo's next system, I'm willing to give it a try. And I'm hopeful for how Atlas will handle if there's ever a Persona 6. So I just, I love the the style of the games. I love how the menus and the fonts are all like just so wildly different. I like the concept of going inside a distorted heart and like changing the desires of the persons. From a Catholic perspective, I love the idea that the Phantom Thieves don't want to kill the wrongdoers. They want to reform them by talking to their shadow self in the metaverse and then getting that person to realize, I screwed up, so I need to ask for repentance. Now, obviously, it would be ideal if they could find a priest, but it's a good it's a good step in the right direction of showing a more pacifist approach. Like, sure, they have to fight the spirit in the metaverse, but they don't kill it. They say, we want you to be able to atone. And that's a big part of the Catholic faith is, yes, Jesus forgives our sins, but he also wants us to do something about it to show that we are truly sorry. He's a God of both justice and mercy. One thing that you guys really like is you love it when I thank the Lord when I get a gift for my supporters. I know that it originally kind of started as a meme, but I am not trying to get another meme. I really appreciate the comments that you guys made on my 3DS unboxing video saying that like even the atheists among you have said that you've learned a thing or two from gratitude. And so I'm hoping that if after you hear this prayer that I'm about to give, that maybe it can inspire you to be grateful for what you have, or maybe it'll inspire you to want to give generously to those who have less. And if you have less, then maybe it can help you be grateful for what you do have. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, thank you so much for Matthew and Megan being so generous with their gifts. I didn't ask for either of them, but I am still so grateful that not only were they generous, but you probably prompted them to want to give. Thank you for, in their abundance, they are willing to make a little bit of a sacrifice for those of us that don't have much. Please help those in the audience that are watching and listening to this prayer to be grateful for what they have, or to be willing to give more to those who have less. And I just hope that you will allow people to be really thankful for all of the blessings that you give. That even when people are suffering, you offer new perspectives and eventually you'll offer a new reality to those of us who are persistent. So 
Thank you very much for your generosity. Please help this video to make a difference. And please help my audience to feel like they're different people after watching this. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And my camera just turned off, so I hope that didn't make the lighting too dramatic. So with that, I'm pretty tired. I'm sure you could tell that my voice was a bit weak from both takes. So thank you very much for watching. Again, let me remind you, in case those of you have short attention spans, I hope you'll give me a double comment. The first part, letting me know if having the microphone without this worked out well, if you can hear me okay. And the second part is, what did you think of the gift? What did you think of the Hufflepuff cup? What did you think about Joker? Um, if you could let me know your history with Harry Potter and Persona 5, that would be amazing. Even if it's just, oh, I know that guy from Smash. That's good enough for me. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Matthew Rakowski, Spoon Ghost, and Splat Cat for supporting me on Patreon. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!